Okay, Finance Committee meeting, uh, March 3rd, 2022, 9 a.m. Call the roll. Young? Yes. All? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McTaggart? Yes. Call the meeting to order. We have a motion to approve the agenda. Yeah. Second by Mr. Hughes. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Do we have any public comments? And we'll move on to liability insurance update with Byron Money. Uh, not much to report. I know that they're doing an evaluation, an estimated evaluation of all the buildings that you guys uh, have on property. Uh, I believe we've been working with the Sheriff's Department uh, to see where we're moving on that. And uh, that's about it. I don't have anything pressing. You guys have any questions? I don't think so. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to group insurance with Susie. Yes, um, I believe that Jill and Amanda probably reported last month when I, or I think the meeting was probably canceled, but um, for, due to the weather. But the deductible report from Hope Alliance was sent over to Blue Cross Blue Shield, so that was all set aside for the December month, and then claims would have been reprocessed and refunds would have gone to members who had claims reprocessed. Um, over the counter um, COVID test, you can get up to eight. The employees and any of their um, dependents on the plan can get up to eight tests per 30 days. Um, paid for by Blue Cross Blue Shield. If they purchase it at the pharmacy counter, they just have to show their ID card. If they purchase it, if they're at Walgreens and they go to the regular checkout, there is a form they just need to receipt. There is a form that they just have to complete and send through, and then Blue Cross will reimburse them for that. Um, and then I just, um, now that we're all with Blue Cross Blue Shield, well, they have Well on Target, which is the wellness portal for employees. I'd like to get something out to all the employees because there's so much that you can do with Well on Target. The check-ins, you earn points. Those points turn into buying free things on their Well on Target store. I've gotten 40-inch flat screen TV. I've got some nice purse. I mean, there's Milwaukee tools. There's just so much that's on there that these employees can take part of that's free to them. So I'm gonna, so I'll send it to you guys um, to get out to the employees, and then of course, if there's ever any questions, they can reach out to us. Yeah, well, I guess we're not free. And we also received our credit. Yes, Amanda okay. told me you guys got the credit on the twenty-five thousand, so that's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, we're all set there. Anything else? All right. Awesome. Thank Have you. A great day, guys. Enjoy yeah. a beautiful day. This is the camera. Okay, department head reports. Three. Uh, from a financial aspect, we are, I talked about on, uh, well, yesterday, and we're a little bit ahead on the uh, tax cycle. So tax bills might go out a little earlier, but I don't know what he meant by a little. So <laughs> I'm gonna just target for the same as last year, because uh, there's all these things that can happen, but um, we're kind of on target of what we were last year with the tax cycle. Good. So that's all I have. Okay. Joel? Maybe I'll do her and then we can, we're going to talk about the CISA stuff. <coughs> yeah, we do that. Um, just um, regular things going on. The audit is still in process. I'm waiting on them to get back to me for any more information. Um, I do have a call today with Jason, who is doing our single audit, um, so we'll find out more then, but other than that, I, I guess I just realized I skipped over Michael, so maybe I'll do you, and let me do Michael and then we'll, I got out of order there, but Michael? You're fine. Uh, we, um, as far as the phone project goes, Jill, if there's any updates that I'm missing, but uh, they're just uh, finishing up a couple fax numbers to mm -hmm. uh, get ported over. Um, AT&T has a majority of the contracts uh, canceled. Um, so Jill, if I missed anything there, let me know. Sure. Yeah, I'm just waiting on confirmation to cancel another account for that one. But a phone project, as far as I'm told, is uh, pretty, you know, 99% done. Very good. Contracts closed. Uh, uh, Adam helped with uh, obtaining uh, .gov uh, domain name for the website and for uh, department use for their emails. Uh, we have um, 
uh, one department switched over, so their emails are uh, primarily .gov, and if any other departments wish to use that, they are uh, free to use it. Uh, it's not mandatory as far as I'm told, but it's uh, completed and active and, and working. So I noticed the website <coughs> like defaults to the .gov or whatever else. Yeah, we went ahead and did that. Uh, so you can still go the old or new uh, domain, but it will prefer the .gov. Sure. Uh, and then we worked with Jill uh, to get approval and uh, ordering uh, rolling for the projects that were uh, approved. Uh, so that's the new uh, storage array for the servers. Uh, the uh, UPS power uh, replacement for old equipment and then the backup server and disaster recovery server uh, replacements. Uh, so those have been arranged and ordered uh, due to availability and, and uh, equipment shortages. We don't expect that equipment to come in anytime soon, uh, but it is ordered and that's the important part. Uh, hopefully we'll see equipment uh, come in in about three months or so. Yeah. Okay. I have. Any other questions for Michael? Or? Okay, thank you. All right, sure. Uh, the two deputies that were on administrative leave uh, are back to work. As of January 14th, uh, no charges are to be filed, and all property from the firearms have been returned to them. So everything's good on that. Uh, the Yellman contract card has resumed the 40 hour work week uh, coverage on January 28th. Uh, we only provided 16 less days from uh, the start of that contract. Uh, so that has been uh, adjusted uh, with Jill and with Yellman. Uh, no payments have been received from DOC for days we housed inmates for them during 2020 and 2021. That's not very surprising. Um, uh, ICRMT is finishing up the jail and patrol policies. Uh, they'll be available for review shortly. Um, they also propose that we utilize this power DMS uh, service for implementing the policies for the jail and patrol and investigation. Uh, it documents the policy implementation process and um, keeps the policies in compliance with changes in state and federal laws. Uh, provides up to weekly training and documentation on the policies, and that reduces the liability and is added to the employee training file. So the deputies would get an email uh, stating that they needed to do some training on a certain policy, and then they go through that, that training on that policy, and then that is put in their, their training file. So that's good for uh, the, the attorneys like that, uh, if there were ever to be an issue. Um, the ICRMT has offered to pay for the initial setup and uh, implementation of that. Um, however, going forward, um, not this year, maybe not next year, they offer to pay for at least <coughs> one year for, of that service. Um, for one to 28 employees, uh, it's right at $6,000. For 30 or more employees, it's $7,500 for the yearly operating costs uh, of that. So. Uh, that's something that they were wanting to uh, implement and again it's not going to be a cost to us initially um, but that would be a cost um, probably in 2024 so and that's something uh, that we could start and we could back away from if the board chooses not to do that uh, but they did want to get that approved um, so we could proceed with that uh, once we get the policies up and running so uh, the quote is on the second page of the packet that I sent out. Um, System Park has approved through their village board that they would like to proceed with a 40-hour contract um, for patrol. Um, that's on the third page of your, your packet. Um, this would require hiring a deputy for, uh, to fill that position. Um, that contract could possibly start in mid-October uh, due to the training. Uh, that is if the deputy is in the May 4th class. And I do have two uh, spots in that May 4th class held for us. 
um, that's the academy down in Belleville. Um, the next academy class would be in August, so that would further push it back, uh, and it would be probably April or the next year uh, that we'd be able to start. Um, the next point is uh, hiring of deputies. Sergeant Walbert uh, has been on medical since July of 2019. Uh, he's been paid through IMRF short-term disability throughout that time, um, and not through our budget, so we've actually been uh, saving his salary. Uh, he'll be medically released from employment on April 30th, and <coughs> that will allow for one deputy to be hired for that position. Uh, the system of our contract allows for another deputy to be hired. Um, the interviews of the four candidates have been con conducted by the Merit Commission and the command staff, uh, so we feel very confident uh, in those, uh, those interviews and we're prepared to uh, offer employment to uh, two candidates if they would uh, be passed to that electoral full time board. Uh, it'd be ideal to offer employment soon uh, after the board approval with a start date of April 18th. Um, that would allow time for the uniforms to be ordered and um, in our possession by uh, the start of the Medicine Academy class. Uh, that also allows for a two week ride along period. Uh, that way the candidates get a feel for um, the county and what our policies are and what we do. Um, we do need the uh, two deputies' names as soon as possible uh, to secure the slots in the May 4th Academy. Um, the January jail overtime, uh, 99 and a half hours. Part-time hours were 18. In February was 146 and a half hours. And then part-time hours for the jail was eight. Um, the last point uh, would be the hiring of the 10th correctional officer uh, for the Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30 uh, shift. And in the packet is uh, an, ex an explanation of that. In 2021, we covered 149 days uh, uh, shifts of uh, overtime, just on day shifts. Um, that's 192 actual hours. Um, at the average cost of 39.68, um, that is a cost of just under 71,000 um, dollars. The cost for the new correctional officer to hire uh, would be almost 40,000 dollars. If we were able to have this 10th correctional officer position, like we had uh, back in 2010. Um, they would be able to assist with the inmate court appearances, uh, covering the courthouse from 12 to 1, uh, covering the days off for the court security. Generally, those are covered by a, um, a uh, overtime shift by either a deputy or a correctional officer, generally a deputy. Um, could assist with the court security during busy times, such as jury days and jury trials. Uh, assist with the telehealth, mental health, nurse call training, and administrative duties. Um, one of the big points on um, day shift is when we have two correctional officers on, those two have got to be in the building at all times. <coughs> and we send the correctional officer over to cover the, the lunch uh, for the court security. That leaves one correctional officer in the building. Um, the county jail standards um, state, and that's in your packet, uh, that the cell doors cannot be open um, if there's only one correctional officer in the building. Um, that's for safety and security reasons. Uh, so if there were ever to be an incident in the, in the jail or in the back, um, that would put us at a, at a liability. Um, that would help alleviate that. Um, that other extra CO on day shift, um, they could also help with the medical transports, um, the juvenile transports, the DOC transports, and what that does is helps alleviate us uh, taking one of our two patrols uh, off of the road um, to do those transports. <clears throat> um, if we could better cover the, the road on patrol, um, we had approximately 70 to 75 medical transports last year, um, which is about 
maybe seven hours of, of time. You're anywhere from two and a half hours to um, two and a half to five hours um, each transport. So that would help save uh, a little bit of money as well as far as uh, transports go. Okay. We did have that position back in 2010. Um, and I'm just trying to one get off that hamster wheel of overtime, get comp time, and then they use the comp time for days off, and then uh, they accrue more overtime. So uh, I think with the, the cost savings um, and the other benefits, uh, it would definitely be uh, a good move, and I think a, a bonus for uh, the sheriff's office and to reduce liability. Well, I know I don't know a ton about it, but I know the overtime in your department and, and 911 are significant expenses for every year. And if we could, I guess, based on your numbers, even if we could cut those in half, we could pay for this person. I mean, I guess that would have to be the expectation, obviously. And that was the overtime on day shift alone. <laughs> I would like to utilize more part time uh, officers. Uh, we do have one part timer right now. Uh, I would like to, to open that up and have some more part time officers. So uh, that would definitely uh, reduce our, our cost when it comes to the overtime. So the problem is the, all the overtime shifts have got to be by contract offered to the full time COs. Uh, if they turn it down or don't want it, then they need to put that out for the part timers. So just trying to get off that hamster wheel of uh, overtime, comp time, and then more days off, and then more overtime, comp time, and days off. I think we could get rid of those overtime hours, and obviously it would pay for itself. But, um, I don't know that, I mean, are you? Just giving us a preview. I mean, I guess typically we would do these things in the upcoming budget year that we're talking about. I guess in a few months, but not necessarily with the idea of if we're going to do them, do them in the next fiscal year. Uh, we normally don't do these things in the middle of the year unless there's, I guess, an emergency or something. Typically, but I know you also were kind of thrown into the whole thing at the at the end of the that whole process. So. Yeah. You're, and I have worked closely with Jill, and, and I believe that, that we could be within budget to make that happen. Make it work. Okay. Okay, well then, I guess we have what, the this power DMS issues, kind of the first one that you're wanting us to take action on, and then the hiring of the deputies, and then this correctional officer. Correct. Um, I guess part of the, get them out of order, but let's just do them in order. The, so they're gonna, for this power DMS, they're gonna pay for this, for, you said for? At least one year. At least one year. to work on for a little bit more, uh, but that's our, our insurance company offering to do that and they've been very helpful with the, the policies and uh, any questions that I have. And do we have, Jill, do we know, like, are we going to get a liability benefit out of this or it's just better out of me? Um, this I don't know. This is as far as the, um, um, this portion of it, this is the first that I've heard of this portion of it, but um, I can certainly ask and what this does is it basically replaces the how we're setting up our policies right now instead of having each officer sign off on a brand new policy and then put that in um, the policy folder uh, we can just go back to that system uh, so say we get sued in 2025 for something that happened in 2022 we can go back to that system what was our policy in 2022 because they are ever changing uh, and did that officer sign that? And what different trainings did we have on those policies? Um, and that'll be shown in that folder. I 
I guess I would lean towards maybe let's figure out the whole yeah. that end of it, and, and maybe next month we can okay. get clearer if that's okay. I mean, just so we feel like just just to know what, what hopefully there's there's a reason why they want to pay for this. It must be helping us, or I, I mean, obviously it would be, but if there's a is this gonna do they think this is gonna push down our premiums or something like that because of is why else are they pushing it for for us? I guess I mean, other than the convenience of it, maybe maybe find out a little bit more about that. And have Joe talk to the insurance company would be my suggestion. Unless somebody else has a differing opinion. Okay, and then on the deputies, we probably need to talk about the system park stuff a little bit more. Yes. <coughs> I guess the hundreds. So I don't think we've really gone through the numbers on kind of. Did it, have we changed anything from the Gilman or we? The chairman and I met with um, some representatives from Cisna Park. Um, I did not expect that they would go to their board meeting and pass that as soon as what they did. Uh, so it kind of took us off guard. Um, but we, we did propose uh, the same numbers that we proposed to Gilman and uh, to Sheldon. So uh, with the rise in gas prices, um, that may, may be an issue that uh, those prices would be reflected in, the, in that contract. Um, and I think they would be understanding of that. Um, however, they, they did um, approve that for the $74,200 per year uh, for a one year contract. Um, so I don't think that they would be opposed to an additional cost to that if it's a, a slight cost addition to that. The other thing would be if the contract begins in October, the, the cost for the deputy salary in the next fiscal year, most of it. Right. So that's, that's an additional one. Contract is up, but before it's up to two, and we renegotiated that with them and adjusted the numbers up a little. But let's see, the gas prices are up. I saw 389 on the morning this morning. 366 was the lowest I saw anywhere. And again, we've saved the uh, salary for Becky Walter for the last two years. And I believe yeah. so that has been a cost savings for the budget for the last couple of years. So I guess that's one of my worries and I'm not I'm not opposed to this idea. I think the idea of working with the villages I think is makes from my outsider perspective it makes a lot of sense. But I guess some of these things that Joe and I had a conversation last week there, it's it's nothing about this situation in particular so don't take it as that but my worries are is okay we have that going on we've got a animal control all these different things and, and it's hard to get my get our arms around all these new expenses that we haven't had in years past you know and, and because the last thing we want to do is get ourselves back in the 2010 or you know that 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 time frame when all those Cutbacks had to happen, and, and then we have, like you said, uh, Officer Welber's salary coming back on that we haven't been paying. So it's good that we got. Uh, and with the, the public safety tax, I think that um, that's an added uh, bonus. Uh, but I do think we need to look at that, like Donna has said in the past um, about structuring that, how things come out of that. We, we hire one deputy out of the public safety tax because the other one was hired from uh, Deputy McNally's uh, after he left. So there's actually, since the inception of that, we've only hired one from that public safety tax. <coughs> and, and 
part, the, the system part thing that you're saying that would happen. Do we, I guess we don't have an official date. There is. A, so we don't because we we don't have the manpower to do it. Right. Uh, so, but I guess what's the intention for? Uh, well, they they've already approved for the, uh, for their minutes, um, and it was explained to them that we couldn't uh, make that contract good until we had somebody trained and ready to go. Right. Um, but there's a 14 week uh, academy, um, and that the soonest one that I could get into is May 4th. Um, the next academy would be in August, uh, so I'm trying to be proactive on that as opposed to uh, pushing it off further. So the sooner we can get the that done, uh, the sooner we can get the people trained. Do we need a motion on that? Uh, yeah, we're going to have to have a motion to hire new people. Nice. We got two guys from Sister Park. <laughs> Anybody have any thoughts or discussion on that? Basically, the same thing. It's the same thing we have in Tillman, so. And we're new. I'm totally for it. I think uh, the roads would work out better for everybody, especially Sister Park and us, because in the past, I think there's been very few calls, or Sister Park had very few incidents where they didn't right away call for backup for county. So the county was there right anyway. We used them anyway. The only question I have is several years ago, we proposed the sheriff the then sheriff proposed a plan for this and, and two deputies were hired immediately at that time to cover this and now we're hiring deputies again. What happened to the two deputies that were hired for this kind of a role back, way back at that time? I don't know it's before your time, maybe you don't know. Yeah, I don't believe they were hired for any contracts. Um, no, they were hired right away. I yes. were, uh, one uh, was to fill a spot vacated by Deputy McNally, who was on uh, medical, and the other one, I believe, was from the uh, public safety. From what? From the public safety. Okay, I'm sorry, I yeah. got, I'm getting hearing aids next week. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so those were, were not hired for any contracts. One was hired to replace the <laughs> deputy, and then one was hired uh, to do the public safety. Okay, but at the time we did that, it was supposed to be for a program like this when they were hired. Yeah, I'm, I'm not aware of any of that. I think contract talks had been going on for several years with Lenardia and Gilman, uh, but it just finally came uh, to fruition uh, last you know, year. This came in even before Lenardia and Gilman came on. They were immediately hired because the sheriff was going to go out at that time, contact System Park, and other villages in the county to cover his cost of the new hire. That my, predates me, I think. It's my understanding that the sheriff pointed out the one deputy replaced the one that left and the other one I think was the one that's been targeted or being used in Gilman. So. I'm not bringing this up to Throw wrench into things because no, I, I wanted to get through it. It might be that what Charlie says is, is right, but the deputies, the, the deputies that were hired, they were just the disposition on them, as Clint said, that one was used to replace the deputy that left, and another, the other one is used to do for the contract in Gilman. I guess along those same lines, I mean, the fact that, I know, uh, how has the not having Sergeant Welder or, um, around, I mean, what, what's... It's put us in a bind on quite a few occasions. Um, you know, when you have a shift of three, um, it's supposed to be four, uh, when you have a shift of three, uh, it definitely takes a toll. Um, so. And then you add the Gilman contract to it. Uh, so if you have a shift of three, but then one is covering the Gilman contract, then you only have two for the county. So having that Sergeant Walter spot filled uh, is going to help out. Because uh, if we have uh, one guy take the night off or he's sick, uh, and we still have to cover the Gilman contract, um, then we're actually covering it with, with less people. 
So it would definitely be good to have sort of all those uh, spots back to it. I guess if I might say one thing that might help the committee a lot would be if there was something in, a, in the nature of an organizational chart of the sheriff's department and the deputies that we could see what roles or what spaces they're filling and so forth that might provide a better understanding on everybody's part not only for the way things are now but going forward for any changes that might be proposed we, we have um, two on each day shift so our, our patrols work um, Friday through Monday and then Tuesday through Friday um, so they have either Tuesday Wednesday Thursday off or Saturday Sunday Monday off. Um, and then our night shift uh, we would have four on each night shift um, so that's to cover the Gilman uh, car and uh, to cover the, the rest of the county so I guess I guess to my point you have you have deputies that serve on, on regular patrol assignments but you also have investigators such as, as yourself that don't do that type of thing so in order to understand the needs of your department better is why I'm suggesting some type of an organizational chart that might you know have something if something's in black and white it's a lot easier for people to remember or understand or refer to that that's kind of where I'm coming from yeah definitely <coughs> but this again this uh, deputy Walver um, that spot uh, that is able to be filled um, and with uh, that date coming up on April 30th um, and the class starting on May 4th uh, that would be the earliest time that we could do that instead of pushing it off for myself I'm, I believe this is something we need to decide on month like it isn't to move forward or not with the assistant park contract and also with the academy so we need to we need to keep up with two park. sergeants correct Ryan and Eric uh, it'd be Eric and Sergeant Walver uh, Bill Walver was the sergeant so so we were less on command staff right now with him being out and um, Ryan is a the lieutenant. So it's my goal to have it to where there's never only one deputy on for the whole county. Uh, if there's if this being Central Arch County, um, I just worry about their safety, um, and I don't want them to be on a domestic or be on uh, a simple call. Uh, we had that situation in Southern Illinois where the deputy had. Uh, went to a call of a vehicle sitting alongside the roadway, uh, pulled up there, got out of his car. I've done that hundreds of times um, and ended up getting shot. So um, I just don't want our guys to uh, be in danger to where they rely on harm to the whole county. So that's my goal. So you're saying you got shot a hundred times? <laughs> no, I pulled up on you know vehicles sitting in the roadway. So. I think I know what you meant, but yeah. it sounded like you. <laughs> what if we keep doing these things with the villages? What's the longer term vision of that? Because I guess not being involved with that, but I would envision that if you get enough villages around the county, and we had this kind of agreement, if I recall, with Gilman that, okay, if there's a problem down the road that, yes, they can go help and assist, and there's not like the, there's a little bit of flexibility in all that, obviously, for the needs of the county as well, that if we had enough placement of that, I guess at what point do we have enough villages where we can take a guy that you have full-time right now and make him one of the village people instead of just adding more and more and more and more. I mean, if you have enough density at some point, mm -hmm. that would have you'd have to reach a moment that we just we don't need that anymore. I guess I mean uh, I'm not saying we're anywhere near that. I'm just saying that yeah. I mean, that's there has to be a vision of. I mean, to me, 
the ideal thing would be from trying to not spend county money would be every village that has a police department right now, whether it be Chevance, Clifton, Ashcombe, that all these ones that are paying Gilman, Sister Park, Milford, whoever, we have a contract with each of them. And as a result, we don't, as a cost savings to the county, we don't need to have as many full-time guys that we're 100% paying for ourselves. Uh, because that's where you get the real synergy of I think you're right there, except it's got to be centering for the little villages as well. For sure, yeah. yeah. But if you have enough density yeah. of yeah. villages, and I, mean, I, I guess I don't know the, how the work works, but, but I would just imagine that there's probably more problems in the village than out in the countryside that's outside of the village uh, limit. Maybe that's wrong. I'm just guessing, but maybe not. <laughs> maybe it's the opposite. But that, okay, if we had a guy in each village or a good presence in all these villages that there'd be a big heavy police presence in the county um, that could deal with some of those issues but I don't know. sorry you were saying something Charlie yeah I agree outside the villages but the remain about the same but you get closer contact with the villages to get that same job done I mean, there has to be an efficiency yeah, at some point exactly. right I know Champaign County has done contracts for ages uh, with a lot of the small towns. Uh, actually, St. Joe has never had its own police department. Uh, they've always contracted with the sheriff's deputies. So it's not like contracts are just a new thing, a uh, new fad. It's something new in Iroquois County, but it's not unique to law enforcement uh, in that small towns are finding it harder and harder to hire police officers and retain them. Uh, it's more of a stepping stone to other departments. So, you know, Gilman, uh, they offered that job up for a year and they couldn't get anybody uh, to hire. So, same thing with Clifton and Ashcombe. Um, you know, they, they end up combining and they're covering both towns. So. Well, and in Milford, many times we had a deputy, a county deputy that's working extra when he's off as a village police officer. Okay. Yeah, some of them guys do work part-time hours. I know when I first started, I used to uh, I used to work part-time in Clifton. Uh, I'd get off at 6 a.m. and I'd go over in Clifton from 7 a.m. to 11 or 12, and then I'd go home in the midday. Uh, I was over in Gilman uh, on my days off as well. So, but that was when I was single and didn't have any kids. <laughs> Had some extra time. I guess one possibility too is the sheriff and I have talked a little bit about something similar to what Ford County does with their small towns where they charge a nominal fee, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars a year where the deputy on his normal route will just detour through and patrol the streets of the town for half hour, an hour, whatever it is it takes, and then go on his way and maybe when he comes back. I guess that's what I was kind of getting to is, is that how do we, <clears throat> by working together with the villages, I would think at some point you reach a point where you can do more with less than each village having its own police force. So there has to be an economies of scale at some point that, okay, you have a bigger organization, but we, it costs everyone in the county, whether it's going through village prop taxes or or county taxes, it's going to cost them less because there's this cooperation and, and yeah. there's a, more police officers. I can definitely see that because, like Buckley, I'm not Loda, saying we're there now. I'm just saying, yeah, yeah Buckley, Loda, the Lakes. You know, they they started to talk about you know, hey, can we get an officer and pool our money together, sure, like that. So, yeah. okay, I guess we need. A motion I mean, just one other thing are we per the union contracts not cast a judgment just to understand it better but required to backfill this sergeant welder's position or I mean I don't I guess I don't know exactly how that works or, I mean by, by I, don't know I know we by, want to but yeah I don't know by the contract we're bound to uh, I mean I guess per se just throw if we said no, and he is done on April 30th, 
that you would have no issue with that? I mean, I'm not saying they would have an issue, but they would have no no recourse. No recourse. I don't believe so. <clears throat> Just curious how that worked. But. So as of now, you have 12 deputies, one sergeant, one lieutenant. Correct. And one deputy and one sergeant are also investigating. Yes. I think we we can have two motions. Uh, I'll make a motion that we move forward with the sister park. Um, I don't know what we say because we don't actually have a contract. <laughs> well, we have a proposal, but we need to update it with some of the with the sister park proposal. Proposal, proposal that's in line with the Gilman contract. Contract. I think it's, it's possible that if we have enough time either tomorrow afternoon or Monday that Gil and I and Sarah can get together and get the numbers updated in time for the meeting on Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, I've already started doing that, kind of basing it off of the 6.2 inflation rate. Um, however, for fuel at the time, I put in $3.65. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, adjusting the fuel cost and pending, you know, but, but everybody even that was the easier for me to get to together. We just need to go over some of that. I'll second that. So we're going to, so we, we'll go forward, the proposal is to go forward with the proposed system park agreement. I guess it would be my understanding that if we're adjusting the, the numbers, then this park may need to re re vote or ratify that, that change because they were voting on the right. Thing. I just yes. have a, a general question for these contracts. Is there a tool that you can plug into a contract that is a sliding scale for fuel costs <coughs> where say there's a 10% increase in fuel costs than the contract? You know, I'm sure you could have, yeah, some kind of a surcharge clause or fuel surcharge clause or something like that if we wanted to. Because it seems that that's going to be a moving target all the time. Right. Just a question. It makes it more complicated, but yeah, I'm sure we could. But if we open up the pipeline and gas is now a dollar and forty, then they're going to say, hey, we don't want to pay as much. So. Mm -hmm. And we're within a year. I mean, by making year long contracts, we can adjust. I mean, <laughs> even the post office got uh, contracts for gas vehicles. Okay, so what should my motion be? Actually, <laughs> that's what I was asking if it should be just moved to send it to council. Send it to the full board? Yeah. Because you're going to have a pros contract now, but then we're going to change it in less than probably 24 hours. And so we'll move to send the proposed. Because the wage and hire contract. You can't send something that doesn't exist. What are we moving to do? <laughs> That's not we like the idea. That's Somebody that's else talk about it. Not necessarily true because it's quite often times send things uh, over to the state's attorney for them to finish up or change and whatever. So I, I, I don't think there's a problem in improving the contract subject to updating the prices for fuel and, and uh, yeah. maintenance <coughs> and other uh, inflationary factors. We have to have so many minimum so many. We have to we have to look at so as I said, mileage, not to ex not to exceed so much or not to under so much. Then they could fill you out in between. As I said a little while ago too, we have to take into effect the fact that if the contract begins on October first, then there's a new new contract to be negotiated with the FOP. Yeah. That'll begin on December first. It's really this well, when we're talking about doing this before December first or what if I'm here October first. The contract will go into effect 
before then. But the, con the new contract begins December 1st. <clears throat> then, that, then that will be what we'll be paying the deputies for 10 months of the contract. We don't know what that contract is going to be. Uh, you know, if it follows the pattern of what the past several contracts have been, it's probably going to be two and a half percent. But with inflation being what it is, I don't know what they're going to come with. I don't know that there's been any talk about it. it yet. I don't either. think anybody has any ideas about what it might be. First thing is to hire hire the deputies to give them training so we can proceed with the contract because if we don't have the deputies that fulfill the contract, then we can't proceed with it. So and I would like to see it to where um any of the pre contracts are all due at the same time. Well that's what I was just gonna say. Maybe we should be doing a year gonna, contract we'll as we get six more and more and more pension of them doing a year right, right, whatever. So that we're so they could aligned if they're willing to set on December one, okay. like the yellow contract, that would be easier. They still have to hire somebody else. Yeah, Agreed, to, but I think we might yeah, want to have, know that. We have to figure in what the cost is. Not that we don't want to do it longer term, but it, in order to align, do a short term one and then <coughs> do another one at the end. I always say if you get you know, 10 cities or villages or whatever on board, you don't have like 10 different <laughs> start Weird mapping. months just for bookkeeping. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so. Nevertheless, that's fine. We're still going to have to figure in the salary of the deputies beginning December 1st, which will be under a new contract. The contract we haven't negotiated yet. Okay. So we'll have to do some <coughs> guesswork. Which, so. Which we can do. I'll move to approve the proposed contract with System Park to end November 30th, subject to, I don't know, what is that? What is that? <laughs> you know, Is that what we want to do? Just to hire okay. to, one to, person. To hire one person for the proposed contract <coughs> in order to fill a spot, which will be the right. Because we're not really approving a contract. We're just right. setting a bid up to go. All right. So you're here. Basically, hiring two deputies, one to replace an existing <coughs> um, terminated deputy, and, and one for the proposed system of park police service contract. And that, that part of the slide, we're still going to have to have something about the contract for the new system of the park, too. Right. But for now, what you're worried about is hiring the deputy. Can we keep them separate? Is there any reason? You don't have to do anything with the contract, in my opinion. What I would say is approve or um, move to approve the hiring of two deputies, <coughs> one to um, fill a existing position and one for a proposed system park police service contract. Okay, I'll move that. Okay. It's so moved. Second. Any more discussion? Okay. Call the roll. Young? Yes. All? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McTaggart? Yes. <coughs> okay. okay. I think that was, we'll talk about, or, or Jill will follow up on the document management service. Oh, and then we have the other yeah. <clears throat> okay. And then the last item was this correctional officer proposal. 
my, I guess my initial thought is that we should wait and do the simple budget, but that would be my feeling. But. Yeah, we had talked about that you'll get the ball rolling and if you would talk about it now, um, more I think it kind of makes sense if we can eliminate, if we can, with the budget. if we can eliminate that. But it, yeah, it makes sense if you can start eliminating some of the overtime costs to cover the salary costs either way. We'll do that, start, start it now and then um, put, put that have that in the budget proposal next week. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know that the union is going to approve a part-time man? We already have part-timers. Yeah. You have two of them? Um, one and a half. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we, we already have part-time. So there's not going to be a problem getting more? No. No. Because they will not approve part-time television. Yeah, that's after the noises. But um, yeah, we've already we've yeah, had, they've had that in there for yeah. a while since I've been here. The corrections portion of it has had right, issues. Right, but we're talking here. about more and, and yeah, and we've never advertised or we haven't advertised for quite some time for correctional officers. I think uh, since I've been here, we've only had four at one time. Yeah, and we've had um, we, I've got three applications right now for people that are interested in positions. So. I think we should, I think if we can keep the overtime or to offset it with, with the overtime hours, it makes sense because we spend way too much money in the, especially there and down the hall here mm -hmm. and on overtime. So I think it makes sense, but I think we probably ought to do it with the budget. Because mm -hmm. that's how we typically do things. The first step of building off is off that extra. Yeah. One other thing, I think we need to make it clear in the notes, the, on the system park thing, mm -hmm. I think we made this clear in the Gilman, but I'll say it again just so we have it in the minutes or whatever. That deputy is tied to that contract, and, and if there's, yes. okay. God forbid, some reason that that goes sideways or system park decides after the first contract is over with, that they're not interested anymore, yeah. then the reality is, is that the position would be eliminated and you know I think we're all on that page but that is, that a, that is a possibility that that is yeah. a possibility and it's, that that head counts tied to that to keeping the people in system park happy I guess <laughs> and wanting to pay okay I think you don't the extent correctional officer at this time and then um, within budget and um, and then budget for it uh, in the next upcoming year. <clears throat> Since we're only a few months away from discussing budget, if you could work on hiring part-timers to kind of offset that a little bit for this budget year, then include it for next budget year is my suggestion. I guess my worry is that if this actually comes true, it's a no-brainer. Right. My, my worry is, is that I know overtime's not, and I'm not saying that for this situation, but overtime's not always that simple either that there's... <clears throat> I mean, I think we have enough overtime that it probably would. We only have to recover half those hours, but it right. probably would pay for itself. Mm -hmm. um, that, that position would definitely help out and, again, like reduce the liability of having one correctional officer in the building. I get worried something would happen in the back and we want to have one person in the building. Because there's not, not always um, one of the investigators who's upstairs. And, you know, Bergen County Jail standards, we need to have people on. And that's not an issue when it comes to the afternoons and midnights, because they're stuck there all the time on the midnight shift. But at the day shift, that's where we run into the issues um, with the cover of the courthouse uh, and court transports. If one of the correctional officers is over next door with, say, they've got a trial, even if it's for a driving suspended, they could be over there two, three, four hours. Um, 
um, and again, that just leads one correctional officer in the building there in the waiting room. Um, I'd say, if you don't mind, my personal feeling, and I guess someone else might have a different one, is, is that at least for this year, I would rather think about it. And so we're not doing things on a spur of the moment thing, and maybe we can talk about, we can put it on the agenda for next month. But I, my personal feeling is I'd rather at least wait and talk about it next month and so it's not for okay. have a moment to digest it and make sure that we have thought everything through before we just add somebody in. Once you do that, we can't go back. <laughs> not very easily. Not very easily or not in a nice way. So I think it'd be better to just at least take a month here and think about it. And I definitely appreciate your consideration and if there's any other questions or things you would like to to, uh, to gather. Uh, just one moment. Okay. Thank you. Glenn, do we have vehicles for all the deputies now? No. Uh, we haven't received the, the three that we had ordered. Um, GM opens up the fleet line uh, for a month or so, and then they work on the fleet vehicles, and then they go back to the regular vehicles. So okay. we have not received those yet. Okay. Thank you. Discuss an approved process for funding with joint dispatch. Do we have anything? Yeah, we no, we Sorry? Okay. It's not really advanced that much beyond where we were last month, so we can okay. put it down for next month. Okay. The main well, issue is the main issue is the three ways of funding is one is funding it all through the county or public safety. Second one is funding it the way we have in the past, and the third is funding it on a call for service basis. The problem, the main issue with the call for service basis is no person. There's an extraordinarily large number of police calls down there which kind of throws everything out of whack. So, anyway, that's, we, we still need, need to behave. Progress. Milford also says the count isn't accurate, so I take exception. Well, maybe, maybe the 911 doesn't know how to add and subtract, I guess. Perhaps. But also, as I understand it, there are only some count, some villages that ask for a report like that. Not everybody asks for a report. I know that, that they had some, they watched that, and there were some calls that were actually Martin's in that went to Milford. So I don't know. You know, you could see maybe that was just a clerical thing, but Milford questions the accuracy of the count. Well, okay, we'll put that on the next meeting's agenda as well, and then we'll move to claims. Any questions or comments about the All this stuff on the IT is all in line with it. So thank you. Yes. We approved with the budget to do it. We just want Michael said wanted to get it ordered because our meeting. Back order. Mm -hmm.
Okay, anybody have questions on the plans? If not, I need a motion to approve them. I'll make a motion to approve them. One second. Gerald, second by Steve. Any other comments? If not, take the roll count. Young? Yes. All? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McTaggart? Yes. <coughs> okay, the motion passes. Um, any old business? Yes. I want this committee to come up with a plan for the public safety tax to set aside a portion of that for future whatever reason. Yes. Maybe we should put that start putting that on the agenda because that'll be for next we'll put that as an item and start talking about that next month and then that'll lead us in the budget, which is right around the corner, I think. Yay. <laughs> okay. Very well. And new business. Did you have anything or you oh, you're you're next meeting. oh you're yeah, okay. <laughs> I didn't know if you had any news for us or anything. No, sorry. All right. Very well. Okay. We need a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.